here, Ben? Kind of like just sitting on the ground. Okay. You're going to like that for an hour? Well, this... Well, I'm going to s- oscillate between that and just doing this. Okay. Okay. You're going to just start shitting like you're using a squatty potty. Mm-hmm. Well, this is, uh, I've been taking a Korean Orange Theory classes, and they just have mm. you squat like this, this for 30 they, minutes. They, they hit us cigarettes, cigarettes at the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guy just hits you with canes until you're... Wait, what What? What did you just say? You're, ta- you're taking Korean Orange classes? Oh, do you know what Orange Theory is? No. It's Orange what, Theory uh, is a very popular gym now where you go and it's like, what is it, like well, maybe like, 180 a month? Yeah, it's like a white, white whores do it and they get on a bike and a, and a gay black man screams at them until they, you know. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's not even an Asian guy that runs the class? No, so Ben's saying he's doing the Asian version oh, of Oh, the that. Asian one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Where they just I'll, make you do Korean exercises. Right, which I was about to call, until you rudely interrupted, <laughs> I was about to call it Orange Chicken Theory. But <laughs> that joke's been ruined. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If one of us bombs hard enough, we have to do a cannonball in the pool. Yeah, cannonball in the pool. Yeah, just hold me under and just kill me. Since I made us do an outside episode. I'm sick, by the way. Well, I'm not sick. My my dumb girlfriend got sick going to Texas. She's like yeah. bronchitis. So I kept thinking we were doing it outside because of your parents being in town, but then I'm now realizing it's because you're sick. <laughs> no, I thought oh. somehow this like the slurs had to be outdoors. <laughs> well, it's like something. how dogs are getting punished, <laughs> and it's like just put them outside. That's for eight what hours. I thought was happening. We have to record in the laundry room with a blanket. <laughs> I literally waited in my car and I watched. Katie leave with your parents like a psychopath. And, and the then, baby. And the baby. It yeah. felt like in The Sopranos when Tony uh, has Carmela take his mom out so he could hide all his guns. I know, because I thought home. I thought we were waiting for them to leave before we recorded, and I was calling Ben. I was waiting in my car, too. We were like two fucking idiot like we, FBI guys. It was like a stakeout. Like a stakeout. Yeah, that's exactly. I thought I was about to rob Ben to yeah. do a recording. And then I was like, finally, I'm like, oh, they're gone. Like, he's just setting up. And then I walk up, I, I see my mom in the window waving at me, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like, I just got made. <laughs> like, I'm in Serpico, and I'm about to get shot in the back of the head. When they drove by, I literally did, I, I, slouched, I slouched under my seat like, like I'm in a movie. <laughs> I didn't want her to stop and then be like, hey, what are you, you about to go say slurs? Hey, uh, y- y'all going to say slurs by the pool? <laughs> Now, we like all the slur talk. We don't like it when you say stuff about Israel. We like the racism. Can you just keep it with, without the curse words? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, say slurs all you want. That actually is true, unfortunately. Yeah, it actually <laughs> is. Yeah, I'm waiting for Dad to come to you and be like, Listen, just c- keep the F words down and just b- move the C words for Chinese people up. Mm. I'm not saying, you know, it's like a scale, like the justice system. You know what's weird is I don't cuss around mom and dad when they're here. Uh-huh. And uh, but when I'm around just dad, yeah, I say any slur I want, and he starts clapping like a little baby. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He starts he starts doing like the he baby goes, dance. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Dude, he he did he did because I just got back from Texas and I saw him and we were at I think I told you guys we were at this really hipster like salad place seeing my youngest brother. And so, somebody there's a younger up, Avery, right? You met him. There's I a met younger him Avery. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome. Buck Avery. Uh, yeah. our truck driving brother from Texas <laughs> who goes on book. Um, no, we, we were at this like hipster salad place and somebody brought up, like as a joke, somebody brought up like Jimmy Kimmel doing blackface and then dad goes, now that's, that's the problem with everybody being woke now. You can't get away with, like everybody's offended. And I was like, what are you talking about? About blackface? <laughs> He's like, yeah, you know, there used to be a guy, everybody's offended, but I swear to God, he said this, he goes, there used to be a guy who'd put on blackface and he sang and made a bunch of jokes and everybody laughed and it was fine. And I said, Al Jolson? And he goes, yeah, that's his name. <laughs> like he literally thinks like Robert E. Lee got canceled. <laughs> I asked uh, dad if he wanted to hold his granddaughter for the first time. Sure. You know what he said? What? He literally looked at me, he goes, no. <laughs> Wait, has he has he held your kid yet? Uh, we made him hold the baby for like thirty <laughs> seconds, and he yeah. was like, "All right, I think I'm good." He, like it was burning him. You know what he told me? <laughs> what he goes? Well, when y'all were little, I never held y'all, and I thought he was doing a bit. And he goes, "No," he goes, "I." He goes, "Mom uh, held all y'all," and uh, he goes, "I never, I never wanted to do any of that, so I just never, I never held you guys once." Yeah, he's mm. like, I was trying to give you the the. <laughs> The famous Avery Flathead, and your mom was worried about Interesting. it. Interesting. 
famous Avery. The famous Avery yeah. flathead from never being given love growing up. Dude, did, he said so. Did he go five years without touching us? Like, did, did was were we born? And dude, it was six years old before I think, he touched us. I think I have a memory of me walking towards my dad when I'm three and then him going like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Like just passing me in the hallway, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like when a baby comes to you in public and you're worried about looking like a pedophile, so you're just like, "Whoa, okay, all right." It's so funny picturing him saying that to you, and then smash cut to you sitting Indian style in your backyard <laughs> podcasting. Dude, there was waiting so- for them to leave so you could go outside and say it. I know, just so we could be our actual selves for <laughs> two hours. So we could do our jobs. Because I took I took Kelly back home, and there were so many moments, I swear to God, I would stay with my parents where my dad would just be like, yeah, you know, some of the kids were rambunctious, but, you know, not Jace because he had, um, you know, he had real bad anxiety. So if you just screamed at him a little bit, he'd behave. <laughs> He's literally like the dad that's like, oh, you just shake him when he gets angry. He just, you know, he just, he really um, feels the pressure of your, your approval. So if you just withhold that, he'll really do well. He's an anxious baby. Just shake him. I got. I shook him to sleep because he wasn't. He had that colic. I had to shake the colic out. We of him. don't have the money for one of them damn fancy rockers. We got to shake him. Yeah, of course, dude. There was also a story, dude. There were so many. He was also like, yeah, we put Jason uh, daycare for a couple years, and we had to take him out because one day he came home covered in bots, so we couldn't use that daycare anymore. <laughs> were you being eaten alive by the dude, other I think kids? He dropped me in like a trailer park with like cousin Eddie's family, and they tried to like eat me or something. Dude, I actually know the ac- real story, and I didn't want to tell you. Wait, what? But is now this? you know the tip of the iceberg. What is it? Wait, what? When I was back in Texas, like four months ago, I had like a moment with mom and dad on Katie's farm, uh-huh. where they they came out there begrudgingly, of course. Sure. I mean, dad told us that he didn't want to be here. Right. By the way. He just he flew all the way out here and he 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 told us that he hates being here. Didn't yeah. he say he, he didn't he say he listened to the show and it made him depressed? Yeah, he didn't tell me that. He told my mom. My mom told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Your guys' lives are so fucked up. <laughs> I know, dude. Like literally, <laughs> the in, the relatives are in town, and my main source of income depresses them. <laughs> that we've been that we've dreamed of doing. For years, the reason we moved here mm. is to do this. A decade of, of failure. A decade of failure and struggle <laughs> to finally get rewarded. And because a, a couple of goat fuckers lied about Jesus 2,000 years ago, <laughs> all of a sudden I can't talk to my parents about oh, it. Man. Dude, he to- Ben texted us that right before I left, and I popped another beta blocker before I got out of the car. <laughs> nice. I popped, I popped two beta blockers, and I was just listening to the... Uh, the uh, drum, the steel drum cover of uh, PIMP from Anatomy, from of, Anatomy a Fall. of a Fall. <laughs> I was listening to that for an hour. I was like, I'm just, I'm grooving, dude. Looking for a balcony. <laughs> it was so funny. It's like before Tiger plays 18 now, the kind of regimen he's on. Yeah. Like he has to go to the gym. He has to take horse tranquilizers. He has to take like Vicodin. Yeah. yeah. You're on the same regimen just to like go see mom yeah, and dad. Just to be within 40 <laughs> feet of them. Because, it, dude, it literally is like, it's like my body. <laughs> It's like you my, have like an epidural, right? Dude, now. I told Kelly, I was like, it's like my body is like a, a Geiger counter for my family. Your doctor's gonna prescribe you fentanyl, soon. <laughs> dude. It's like I get, it, dude. It's like I'm approaching like the elephant's foot at Chernobyl. Mm-hmm. Like I step out of the car and I just hear like, like clicking noises, and I'm like, why does it feel like all my cells are dying, dude? That's so depressing to be around. He's like a huge bummer. He flew, you, you he flew out here to say he didn't want to fly out he doesn't here. Want, he told my mom, he goes, uh, I'm never coming out here again. <laughs> so he's just not going to be in his granddaughter's life at all. He doesn't, he doesn't care baby, at all. Your baby was born one month ago. <laughs> he, yeah, he doesn't care at all. You know what he does all day here? What? Uh, you know where Emma lays on the that big stone like a lizard over there? <laughs> I swear to God, my dad strips down to his shorts. And then he lays down and he'll go to sleep for three hours in the sun mm-hmm. on a on a yeah. rock with no pillow. Yeah, well, we've told you my That's dad's favorite activity is getting burned. Yeah, is that a walk outside like with aluminum foil like poly walnuts and just let the sun just try to kill him. That's <laughs> classic, just fucked up dad stuff. Yeah. My dad used to sleep in in a, a denim jacket on the floor in the living room. I would open, I would open, I would come Why? home. 
I, just to be miserable on purpose. Yeah. They and love it, man. I used to open the door and it would hit his head. It would be, <laughs> I'd come home and open the door and hit his head. He would be sleeping on the carpet on the ground in Jesus. front of the front door. Is your is your dad's head, he's like in like a Springsteen album or something? Yeah. He would have full Doc Martens on, tied, like every, just, just bundled up yeah. on the floor in jeans. It's amazing he wasn't even a drunk and yet he kind of lived like one. No. He was constantly getting bilked for money he was sleeping he on would the have, floor he would he would go and make like a weird creation meal like with whatever he found in the kit in the in the yeah. fridge like, make, a, like vegan, a famous bowl like a vegan home. hot dog and like there was a peach and then like some black beans and he'd put it all in like a lettuce wrap and he'd eat that and then he would pass out on the floor <laughs> You wasn't definitely... even like a cool like he was he was like a loser like I was just like just be a loser like watches football with me and gets fucked yeah. up instead you're drinking smoothies and passing out on the ground yeah, yeah. creating your own like punk flop house for yeah. some reason but it, it might be for the best that your dad doesn't want to be in your kid's life well the, here so here's the interesting thing I kind of figured out about him what is he constantly says he's like he goes I'm easy well I don't he goes Wh whatever is good with me. And you go, okay, well, I'm just going to order, like, Mediterranean food. And he'll be like, oh, I won't eat that. <laughs> goes, I'm not going to so eat that. this is what I realized. For the past 35 years, mom has babied him and yeah. given him ex exactly what he wants. Yeah. And so he thinks, because he's gotten everything he wants every second of the day, he thinks his needs are easy to meet. Yeah. Making this guy a cup of coffee, it takes me 20 minutes yeah. until I get it exactly how he wants. But when you ask him what he if he'd like a cup of coffee... He says, yes. And you go, what kind of coffee would you like? And he goes, oh, I'm easy. Just anything. And then you hand him something and he right. hates it. Yeah. yeah. You and hand him you a have latte to redo and he calls it. you a fag and like hits it out of your hand. Yeah. What, and why, by the way, why does he pour half of a jar of honey in every cup of coffee? I, what is with that? I think that's, that is an Avery genetics thing because you are part hummingbird. So that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, you brought out like six sodas yeah. just I so you can our, record. Our brains are like diesel, <laughs> at, diesel engines for depression. So <laughs> they need diesel fuel to run, which is just honey for him. Oh, so I know the real story about how I, I think oh, yeah. this is why you're so, really fucked yeah, up. Yeah. What happened to me? Tell me I, another one. I actually didn't want to tell you this because I thought it might like alter you for like okay. eight months. It's okay. I have two beta. Was I was I molested? Is this what the story? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> mom and dad told me they said uh, that mom went back to work immediately once they had you. Yeah, and you're the oldest child for context for everybody. He was sure. the first. They, uh, I guess, mom had like maybe postpartum depression or something, and she just mm, went she back. Tried to, to kill me. <laughs> she walked into the ocean with me strapped to her chest in a microwave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was sleeping in the oven for a few months, just hoping. Yeah, I was killed like Dear Zachary, just walking into Nova Scotia's ocean, big rocks and waves pounding me. Dude, they told me that uh, they like within two weeks, mom went back to work, which is insane, but that's sure. just who she is. Right. And I love mom to death. We've been having a great time together, and she's been a massive help here. Yeah. Uh, they dropped you off at a fake daycare that ah. was their friend's apartment, who was this lady who I, and I'm quoting dad here, was really mean. Hmm. Mm. Okay. There were other kids there, and the kids were these, like, psychotic children that were her daycare mm. students, <laughs> and they would beat the shit out of you, they told me. Mm. They would twist your arms and scratch you and bite you. Mm. And, and when, I was I was two weeks old, you say? Uh, this was within the first couple of months of you being born. Mm, very so, good, very good. And then she, her method Famously was- Famously not important to- <laughs> How your personality forms whatsoever. Dad would try to go visit you on his lunch break. Yeah. She wouldn't let dad see you. And she had a separate room that she would put you in. And dad said, and I quote, every time I went, he was crying and screaming behind the closed door. And when I would, I would want to go in and say hi to him and comfort him. And she said, no, you're not, you don't go in there. Let him cry it out. Mm. Jesus Christ. That was the story. God. And after they told me that, I was looking around the room like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I Why mean, did that, you tell uh, me that? Yeah, that. Uh, and they told it to me like it wasn't a big deal. I have uh, I have no memory of that. So now oh, I know God. I might have been <laughs> fucked as a baby. So that's fine. Well, what was behind that closed door? I don't know. Do you the think we messed spaghetti up? Monster? Do you think we messed up Jace when we dropped him off at Stephen Avery's junkyard for the first two weeks of his life? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, what, remember how Jace was raised by that pedophile junkyard dog? Remember, remember when he was involved in a murder two weeks into his life? 
He was an accessory. Remember when? Remember when that weird guy in the junkyard asked him for help to move a body yeah. when he was an infant? And, J- and Chase just wanted to watch WrestleMania. And the detectives manipulated him into confessing due to WrestleMania. <laughs> you admit to, to a crime at two weeks in. <laughs> two weeks into life, because I was just like, WrestleMania, I did it. That is really God, fucked that's up. Really I promised fucked myself up. I would never tell you that, but Unless then they went and just told you. it to everybody, uh, we know. No, but then they actually just went and told you, so I just told you the actual story. You have the right to know that if they've... Uh, okay, well, that's really fu- that's actually really fucked up, and really actually makes me feel better about having panic attacks every waking second of my life. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that's been the crazy thing. It's like I've been on beta blockers for like two weeks, uh, and I was like... I feel really good, and then I was like, "Oh, I've been my body's been pumping adrenaline for thirty three years." Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. So that explains a lot. I was a month old and getting the shit beat out of me, and uh, God damn it, fuck! Yeah, it's God crazy, damn right? it, dude! I have like a fucking like black hood childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like I had like like fucking big lurch putting <laughs> hangers out on me when he was smoking crack as a baby. I mean, this is like, dude, but my entire life, I've just been crying all the time. I've been having yeah. panic attacks. Yeah, the first two months of your life, you didn't receive any of the nurturing or care that uh, an infant needs. Jesus Christ. Yeah, God just, damn it. That's why when you just sit on the couch, you're, you feel like you're about to go skydiving every waking minute. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why when, um, that's why when I have to reschedule because my girlfriend's sick, I'm convinced everybody hates me <laughs> and is never going to talk to me ever again. But it's, all, it's just because I was molested. So it's okay. You might have been the only kid been molested, that was fucked, actually. I might have been molested by children. Well, at least he has no memory of it. <laughs> well, at least he blocked it out. At least it manifested into other ways yeah. that slowly ruined him. Well, at least he has no memories before the age of 12, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> God, dude, a real fuck, dude. Yeah. yeah. That's really insane, but I'm, I'm glad I have these glasses on because I'm just crying behind these. <laughs> I was like the Michael Jordan meme. Yeah, this is already maybe the most intense episode we've ever done. <laughs> but it's it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. What is it, 73 degrees? Day this nice, it feels like you never got molested. I was holding the uh, baby in the kitchen, and uh, Dad looked at me. He goes, man, when y'all were little, he goes, all I was thinking was, man, I can't wait for them to grow up and get out of here. And he goes, and then one day you were all gone, and I was like, no, come back. Where'd they all go? Jesus And it, like, wasn't a sad moment for him. <laughs> And I'm rocking my baby like, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh. You want me to make you another latte? (laughs) (laughs) I got a new espresso machine. You want me to make... Have you had a cortada? A cortada. Now, a cortada is very expensive at the coffee shop, but I figured out how to make it at home. Dude, he has no fun. He's he's he hasn't smiled this entire. Dude, can I tell Actually, you? he does. He gets really giddy when I say like a very hard slur. Yeah, really. Yes, yeah, in the yeah. living room. That's how I entertain him. Is I just say the most racist. But it has thing to be like directed at like a group of people, right? He can't be in general. You can't just say fuck. He's no, like, no, 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 He's like, listen. No, no, no. No, no, no I no. can't say that around him. Right. But I can say any slur I want. You can say hard. Yeah. It's not fuck. It's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, it's uh, I, we we got to t- he he brought up Israel and he's anti-Israel, so we got to like shit on Biden about Israel. Nice. But he's only was- anti-Israel because he hates Jews. Well, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he goes, it's listen, I'm all for like, ki- I'm all for killing Muslims. Like, I do have a saw. I'm a I'm a lefty. <laughs> I'm a lefty. But I do want to kill Muslims, but I hate. Um, Jews getting money. <laughs> Call me a comic cuck, but I want to nuke Israel. I'm a I'm a cuck like that. Listen, I'm pro genocide, anti Jew. <laughs> That's been my stance for. I'm a Southern dog Democrat. <laughs> That's what I am. No, but we got to shine by it. It was like it was like giving a dog with cancer like peanut butter before you put it down. <laughs> <laughs> you just like, uh, uh. <laughs> just just tonguing at it, not knowing there's cyanide inside uh, of it, cyanide and ricin. <laughs> But yeah. you know what my mom said, by the way, when and I love my mom, but like, you know, her mind always goes to the darkest places. She lives sure. in, in darkness. You sure. Know? Yeah. yeah. Being they around live, my father. They live in the Hellraiser dimension. They yeah. uh, mom was holding the baby for the first time. And she goes, you know, I was watching a and like this was in a minute of holding mm-hmm. her granddaughter for the first time. She goes, mm-hmm. you know, there was an episode of SVU I just watched where people were taking pictures of their baby and posting them on the internet and pedophiles were taking the pictures and then taking their faces and making them into sex dolls and then they would have uh, do sex crimes with the dolls and then kidnap the kids and have the kids with the sex dolls. 
I'm like, right, right. How does it feel to be a grandmother for the first time? She, yeah, looking at looking at your baby, she goes, "You're not gonna be a little sex doll, are you? Who's not gonna be a little sex doll on the internet? 3D printed sex doll online? Now you, my sweet baby girl." <laughs> Yeah. yeah, dude, it's really, dude. It, Within he, 60 seconds, I'm not making that yeah, up. Yeah, he, uh, you know, I, I walked in and uh, we visited him for like four days. And, uh, you know, you walk in, you're like, hey, this is, you know, the love of my life. I'm so glad I met her. He's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, this, this woman uh, saved me from uh, the darkest pits of hell. And he's like, all right, cool, whatever. Um, and then he was like just bummed out. And then uh, we went to uh, my aunt's place. And she brought up Yellowstone, and he lit up like I haven't seen him light up in 20 years just talking. He told us a whole episode of Yellowstone yeah, start to finish. That's what they do. That's, he was literally that's like, what starts to happen. He was literally mm-hmm. like, so the redheaded girl, and she's a real mean lady. Yeah. But she's, you know, she's a tomboy. That's how she was raised. And I was just like staring at him. I'm like, this is, I'd show you pictures of your of uh, Ben's baby, and yeah. you don't act like this. Yeah. yeah. But he's just going, he's like, and that's when he's like, she, she told her boyfriend to, uh, her brother to hit her and he's like I don't hit a woman and she go to him and she called him soft so he hit her and then Kevin Costner the dad comes he's explaining all he's this like a, the whole episode. like a, like a seven year old who just got a Guinness World Records book and is telling people facts from it and he goes and then Kevin Costner came to him he goes if you he goes I know why you did it but if you ever hit a woman I'm gonna put you in the ground because he's a he's a man about business and I'm just like that's the only thing he gets into is like this yeah. imagined he's like, like they got a real cute baby in that show <laughs> Man, I wish I had that baby in my life. It'd be so much better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's fucked. Out loud to no one, he goes, uh, he goes, I only had two and a half slices of pizza. And then mm-hmm. no one said anything. He goes, is that good? Is, is that good that I only had two and a half? And I looked at him and I go, what do you need, like a blue ribbon or something? <laughs> that you only had two and a half slices. We all have to be proud of you or something. Mm-hmm. He's you like, guys- oh, he goes, okay, okay, okay. And I started ripping into him. I'm like, why Ooh. do you? Why? I go, why can't you just be proud of yourself? That right. you only that you restricted yourself to two and a half slices. Why do you got to announce to everybody? Why yeah. do you need everybody to be proud of you? It just builds up. You sad sack piece of <laughs> shit. You ruined our fucking lives. <laughs> I know because it turns into like a what about Bob? It turns into a what about Bob thing because out of nowhere you have like a weird freak out of you. Seaman said yeah. that happened like dude that happened like three years ago. Was I had I had long COVID and I, I was back and he begged me to go to the driving range and I was like, um. I was like, fine. I was finally there, and he was like, he's like, yeah, you know, I just pray, you know, you get in better shape because I just really, <laughs> you know, I'm upset about, uh, I'm upset about your body. He's overweight, by the way. He, he goes, doesn't think he is, though. No, he doesn't think he is. You so. can't make fun of him for that. He's well, no, very he, what, he's, what he's taking is like, he's taking all his body dysmorphia and placing it into every single person who ever loved him in his life, <laughs> like like Captain Planet. He's displaced it amongst children. Did he say um, this pizza thing out of nowhere? By the way, real quick. You guys had just He's, eaten pizza, or was it like he doesn't have conversations a long time with ago? No, no, no. Ate we had probably ate. And we had been it. done eating thirty minutes. Okay. We were watching the Kansas City. Game. I thought it was like a weird form of like dementia. Like yeah. he's out of nowhere. He's just like, I only had two slices of pizza. No one's eating pizza. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's out of nowhere. Yeah. He's Throughout turned the to day. Uncle. He's just like, I couldn't have helped the kids. They were in the other room. And you're like, what? <laughs> to snap out of it. Snap out of it. <laughs> yeah. Then going, he's like, man, that Patrick Mahomes, I like him. His daddy, though, I didn't. I'm not a fan. <laughs> His daddy is too black for me. Uh, apparently, they that's why they stopped uh, sleeping in the same bedroom is because dad didn't want to take care of us. And mom had to keep getting up to, you know, feed us, mm. you know, change our diaper. My and he heart was, hurts. And the then he was like, me. well, I'm just going to sleep on the couch the rest of my life. Yeah. He's by the way, he's been sleeping on the couch. He refuses to sleep in the nice uh, guest bed we have for him. He's and he sleeping sleeps on fl- that. Lights completely on TV blaring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. By the way, you know, he just, is, he started watching. What? He actually started watching The Sopranos because three episodes are free on the plane. <laughs> he explained to me that there's TVs on planes. Yeah. And he goes, now that, yeah, t- that, now that. I love your dad. <laughs> I love your dad. Yeah, he's, he's watching The Sopranos he's in the living room all day and ignoring us. Yeah. That's actually great. That's actually the best thing he's no, ever done. As I walk by, he's like, ah, too many just bad words. He goes, this show is evil. Right. What they do in this show, they evil. Yeah, but he's, you watch, he's like in season six B, and he's like, man, Tony's done nothing wrong in his life. <laughs> and he's actually not depressed. He's just cool. 
They're evil people, but they did kill that queer, and that that needed. <laughs> At to least happen. they framed those black I people did for have, murder. I, I did appreciate when they shoved a pull cue up that fat fag's ass. <laughs> Oh, yeah, when, when he gets to that your... scene, he's going to rise from the chair. Yeah. Like in the heat of a football game, mm-hmm. like in the last second. Yeah. Philly Leotardo did what he had to do. You know, he's got some flaws, but sometimes you got to take take care of the evil ones. I mean, you had a, you had a fucking Fugazi, you know, Fugat. You know, Vito was a flambe. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, lo- I love Vito. Sp- I love Phil Leotardo because he stood on business when it came to his queer cousin-in-law. <laughs> I just hated watching that Italian man have sex with that Morgan Spurlock in New Hampshire. I think that was disgusting. He says he's going to stop after one season, though, because it's too evil of a show. Yeah. And it's mm. sinful. So he's just going to give himself one season. He goes, season. This show's too damn violent. I'm going to read the Bible. Bible. He goes, at first Galatians chapter one, and then they took the children and put them in daycare where they were molested to death by the Philistines. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. He's watching The Sopranos, and I swear to God, my mom's on the couch. She's been reading Blood Meridian. Wow. So they, they are just, I don't this even is know like what's an, going I'm on. I'm hearing about all, just the whole morning so far has been like an acid trip. Yeah. It, it really it's is, been really tough. It really is like the Adams Family <laughs> type of so thing. Strange. We're like, bad is good, good is bad. <laughs> this is so weird. You I drove around go, with my mom. I We went to get pizza. And as soon as we got in the car, I was like, he sucks. Yeah. I was like, he has no fun. Yeah. No fun. Yeah. <laughs> I was like swerving in and out of lane. <laughs> it was it was like uh, I was like walking Phoenix and uh, I, you were never really here. Yeah, like when he's like fading off a of Vicodin and You're stuff. You're holding yeah. the steering wheel, but also a hammer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know why. You just keep carrying a hammer around the house with you. Yeah, fantasizing about blowing your brains out at a diner. <laughs> what does she? What does your mom say when you say when you say She's that? She's like, I know, I know, I know, but you know how your father is. You know he sucks. I know, I know. He looked dashing that one night sixty years ago. Well, you know what you gotta understand is he could dunk. <laughs> and that's that's he it. Could dunk. He dunk. That's how they met. Is he dunked on my mom at a charity basketball game? Really? They were at a charity basketball game. And like my, my my dad was playing like the reporters from Lubbock, Texas, and he was just going, "Where?" I'm like. <laughs> Do like Dominique Wilkins dunks on like my fucking five foot seven mom. Your dad's like John Stockton. He really is. Yeah, he's yeah. more like Karl Malone. Really, yeah. <laughs> I've been I've been trying so hard to make him have a good time. Mm-hmm. One night I couldn't sleep. Like I had like not like a panic attack, but like man, I just kept circling the drain, thinking about how miserable he was, sure. and like there's nothing I could do. Sure. And I realized that he doesn't. When I offer him a solution. He always pushes it away, and I realize that he doesn't want to be helped. He wants to feel bad about himself, yeah, and that's yeah. the end goal, actually. Yeah, yeah. Solving it is actually mean, yeah. you know. Oh, when you present solutions, he's offended. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's always no, it's fun. I always when I visit him, I start crying a lot out of nowhere. Dads, 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 dads. I just dads, try to hold dads, my. Dads. Uh, I just try to hold my daughter and just look at her and I'm just like be thankful and start tearing. Just up. be thankful. They're. They're 1,500 miles away. Yeah. 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 No, that's the yeah. thing. It's like... Pretty uh, much. Yeah. You got to. Yeah. At this point, it's like, you know, you just like, you like uh, tough out the visit. It's like a rope-a-dope yeah. type of thing. He says, you know, I figure, I hear a horrible story about how I was molested from Ben. I go, okay, all right, all right. Take like that, like a champ, and then just like wait it if out. If your dad wanted to be in the kid's life, you guys would have to like go to court and get a restraining order. <laughs> yeah. Get emancipated at 31 <laughs> years to- old. Yeah. <laughs> Make it illegal for him to even come to California. Yeah, yeah. Get a restraining order on his grandchildren. No, I mean, they never stop. They never stop sucking ass. No. They Two never weeks do. ago, my dad stormed out on me uh, at the end of a good night. <laughs> oh, yeah. He told you. What, what did he do? Again? We had a good time. We saw a movie. We went to a bar and, and uh, drank a little bit and then, like, kind of mildly talked politics a little bit Mm -hmm. and i just said like well you have to understand like people looking at at it are like well under trump we did have like no wars and gas was cheaper and it just people i think people's lives felt like they were a little better but they don't they just can't say that and it just kind of got into that realm and then he just like flipped the fuck out started acting like it was like when uh, trump won and that lady screamed no like, like he just flipped out. He was a little drunk. Mm-hmm. Stormed out on me, cursing me out in the middle of the bar. Everyone's like, "What is going was on?" Was he like, "Trump bombed Yemen"? 
You you <clears throat> mega piece of shit. He, no, he's just like, are you kidding? You believe this? <laughs> and then he goes, does I don't believe this? And I go, are you kidding me right now? I'm not kidding, dude. I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is in front of everybody at the bar. In front of everybody at the bar. Mm -hmm. We're in like Silver Lake. Even people in Silver Lake are like, what an old fag. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like, they're like, listen, I'm pretending to be trans for pussy and you're being really gay right now. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets up out of his chair. You're like, fuck you. You're like, fuck you. Walks out. I'm just like, good God, are you kidding? Like, it was almost like too casual. I was like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's, that's usual. I'm guessing you paid the tab, too. I paid the fucking yeah. tab. Yeah, yeah. I think Maybe I ordered, that's how he just got free. Pretty much. I got him again. I ordered another <laughs> drink. He walked out of the bar like Kaiser Sose at the end of The Usual Suspects. <laughs> <laughs> His face is untwisting, yeah. and he's remaining calm. He's like, God damn it, Devin, you done it again. Devin's running out. He's like, where's the gay guy? <laughs> Find the gay guy. <laughs> So then I uh, I walk out of the bar and I look for him. He, he had, I had only waited like five minutes. He's gone. I asked the the bouncer like what happened, and she goes like I don't know. I saw him get in a car and leave. I'm like there's no way I drove him. So then I'm driving around the neighborhood for like 20 minutes looking for him like a stray dog, and then he won't pick up his phone. He, I think he blocked me. You you see night. him? I think he blocked me. You, you you're chasing him on the street and he. Every time you stop, he stops and looks back at you, and then you go to him. He runs away. He again. Runs away again. Wait, did he really block you? It it um, I called uh, I texted him and it was blue, and then I um texted one more after that and it went green. So I was like, I guess he turned his phone off. Yeah, you hope it's a it's hope, a turn your yeah. phone off. And then yeah. he walked four miles home at two a.m. <laughs> yeah, because he because 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 of because uh, uh, of Trump because of Silver Orange Man like Bad hilly area yeah. as well. Yeah. Not good on his old knees. Then he just texted me the next day an apology, and I was just like, it's fine, whatever. And then we hung out yesterday, no mention of it. Sure. He just got to move on. Those dad apologies where he's like, hey, I got a little too many cold uh, ones, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about bruise. that. <laughs> That's why I stormed out on my only child. <laughs> <laughs> there's something There's something about dads like worldwide that like if you start doing too well, there's kind of like a secret, like, I hope it. I hope it all falls apart. <laughs> <laughs> like they're like they're like they like even if they're like a good dad, they'll be like they'd be like, oh, I'm so happy for you. Dreams are yeah, dreams are coming true. Mine didn't, but yours are. And it's just like in a moment, so a, they could just like sweep everything off the table. There's and be a like, subtle feeling of like of rage. Yeah. about it. I'm like, you think you're better than me? Yeah, it's I, that. It's because I worked for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's I, like I love him to death. I really do. But like, I can't just hang out all day with. Tommy Lee Jones at the end of No Country for Old Men, yeah. yeah, sitting at the breakfast table talking about a dream about it, like his dead dad. I don't even think he's Tommy Lee Jones. Voice. He's the guy that drinks out of the same pot of coffee for a month. Uncle with Ellis, all the cats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's one of Uncle Ellis's cats. <laughs> he actually said yesterday. He goes. Uh, he said. He goes. I'm like that. I'm like that guy in No Country for Old Men. I just make a pot and I just I just microwave it throughout the week. And you go, yeah, very, I, I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Good boy. He goes, I'm kind of like that guy in no country. I'm a, I'm a warning towards people for how your life can slip you by if you... Uh, I'm a Shakespearean... Uh, I'm kind of like a, a big metaphor for untreated uh, illness inside the brain. And kind of how a man... Uh, it's, a, it's a metaphor for how a man becomes an island in his own life. Yeah. I'm a I'm I'm a cautionary uh, character. I'm a cautionary <laughs> tale, but it's too gay to even watch. <laughs> it's like watching the zone of interest. You're like, it's sad, but like, God, this sucks. Oh, it's so depressing every time you guys talk about him. Yeah, I know. It, I mean, dude, it depresses me. Like, I like I seriously had to tell Kyle. I was like, okay, by the way, I might start acting insane for no reason. Yeah, and I kind of do. You kind of just like revert a little bit, dude. That's why you have the baby though, because mm -hmm. then you just he does something shitty to you, and you just go hold the baby. Yeah, and you just transfer all that into her. Yeah, yeah. So what I do is I go to my girlfriend, and I just slap her across the face, <laughs> and I go, "You bitch, you bitch." <laughs> no, it's it's very um yeah, it sucks. But what are you gonna do? Uh, yeah, I love him though. I love him to death. Love him to you death. Gotta, I do. I mean, I do love actually love him so much. No, of course you do. I do too. It's just like that's what makes it tough, you know. It also, it's like God. I wish he was just like the type of dad that just like beat up. Well, I guess he did actually hit us. a yeah, lot. Yeah, no, he actually did uh, do a lot of. <laughs> we did. We did experience uh, ritualistic child abuse. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot he did punch me in the face on the golf course. Yeah, he that punched one you in time. the face. Mom hit me in the head with a sunflower ring. 
ring shaped like a sunflower. Well, I also, I mean, head. I probably got whipped probably 300 times because yeah, yeah, he didn't probably. have a slave. <laughs> he wanted to live it out somehow. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah, he he whips us by strapping us to a big yeah. barrel. What is like, we got flogged. He wanted to name you Kunta. <laughs> I'm, I'm staring at Ben and just like one tears rolling down my eye <laughs> as I just take it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if spanking. Like I'm not going to spank my daughter mm-hmm. like with a big heavy three inch paddle as right. hard She's as a cane, so you can get that whip through the air. I don't think I ever bled from it, but I would have big purple welts across my ass, and it would yeah. hurt to sit down for a few days. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not even like about the pain; it's like the fucking like psychological. Yeah. You know, it's insane what it does to you later. You're seven; you have no is concept it, of anything. See, I don't know if it's bad. Is it bad though? Like, I'm not going to do it, but is it that bad? Yeah. Like, yeah. is it as bad as like punching yeah. your kid in the face? Maybe N- the spanking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but it's there. B- but it shouldn't be done. Well, but it's but a belt and a paddle is way different from like a. Let, I'm gonna hit your bottom like yeah. that. How and about it, this? You shouldn't reprimand children with violence. It's yeah. really as sim- <laughs> simple as that. I don't really yeah. know if there's levels if, to yeah, it. If you're four times the size of something and it's you know views you as God, maybe you shouldn't um, hit it. Strike it. <laughs> Striking children, I yeah. would say, is off the table. Well, everyone's just gonna call us gay now. So I don't. I don't even. Well, those know. those people are, are are fucking drinking themselves to death yeah. because their dad beat the shit out of them. Exactly. And they get they're too retarded to even be like that's bad. They have to go. I was bad. Yeah. I deserved it. They're gonna I call deserve my gay, dad to punch me in the teeth. And then they're going to ask a dominatrix to bludgeon them so they can come. So. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing as people who are like, that therapy, that's for that's for a bunch of queers. And then they dr- drunk drive their truck into a preschool. The thing is, I don't feel sorry for myself at all. And I actually have nothing but love for the guy. He's actually just taxing to be around. Where I'm like, what the fuck? That's the, that's the thing. I'm it's so like, drained being around I know exactly him. the, thing, the you're feeling. Like, you're, it's like an oppressive vibe when you're yeah, around those. There's like, you're it's not, like a clouds in the house. Yeah. You're, you're not like you have to make up for anything. You're like, okay, we're square. It's in the past. Whatever. I'm an adult. Like, just be cool Like when I'm around you. Tough you hang. Know? The tough toughest hang. hang. Tough hang. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a getting stuck in an elevator with a stranger, kind of. Yeah, that's what it feels like yeah. for like days. So he's like never once had fun, huh? No, ma'am, never that's, once. I mean, that's why we started. I went so crazy because I didn't know how to have fun or talk to people or have friends. So I had to I had to go a little crazy and then sort of rein it in because I didn't. I mean, that that was the great thing about without alcohol, man. I would have never learned how to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Alcohol taught me how to have fun. Yeah. And how to, you know, that so- social lubricant to talk to people and hang out with them and have the guts to talk to girls. And yeah, yeah I mean, I, mean, I sucked at it, but at least I had the courage. It, to, can, it can help like br- break a barrier. Dude, inside, without yeah. it, I would have. Th- that was the bridge for me. The bridge from that world to this world was just mm-hmm. it was lined with bottles of booze. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have got here without it. I, I'm thankful for it. We, it was and like, I might go back to it. I very appreciate soon. it. I keep eyeing that whiskey that Devin leaves over. Oh god, he leaves it on the kitchen counter. And it looks very pretty the it. way the light strikes it. I'm taunting. You I love it. the way the light comes through the glass. I left it here on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> Devin, Devin was looking for the best lighting source throughout the kitchen. I got an espresso machine, and I'm getting so into it. It's actually really worrying me. I'm like around the clock making coffee. Now. Well, you get like hy- a barista. You get hyper obsessed and everything. with everything. Yeah. yeah, but it also feels kind of like getting fucked up to me. Right. Because I'm making all these different kind of like, it feels like cocktails almost. I'm like, ooh, what's a cortado? Yeah. Ooh, what's a short cappuccino? Ooh, right. what's a latte? It's got to get to the point where you're just pouring whiskey into these drinks. <laughs> <laughs> By day three, I made something called a Coke Aricano, which I make like a nitro cold brew at home, and then I pour a whole Coca-Cola in it. So it's like it's already getting close to just soda now. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. is uh, which is dangerous. You're turning you know, into a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I was just thinking, if you got a soda stream, the wicked deeds you would do with the soda stream, <laughs> the wicked things the you wicked would make, things. dude, you'd be like, you'd be like a fat alchemist in there, <laughs> a twelve-year-old alchemist making wicked potions. Dude, I got, I might have to throw it out soon because it's just, well, just because it's, it's, I'm, I've, I feel like I'm walking on the edge here. 
The, it is the it is the thing is you do get really obsessed with stuff like you get really into stuff. Yeah. Are you like making like latte art and shit for nobody? I made a heart this morning for the first time. <laughs> yeah, you got to throw that out. We're taking hey, like, that. You're cosplaying as a barista. <laughs> you can just go get that shitty job. I know. <laughs> it's he cosplays as like those shittiest jobs. He's like, I've been getting really into bricklaying recently. <laughs> He's like, I'm obsessed with cleaning my pool. It's like, go be a pool guy. <laughs> You keep doing menial jobs as hobbies. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been getting really into grouting recently. <laughs> big, big insulation guy. I am excited the birds are back. I think it does wonders for me. You hear them twittering? I hear them. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. The mm. the toeys. I saw a toey the other day. The toeys are back. Oh, uh, the toeys are back. Lovely. They're called toeys because toey, toey. Mm, that's great. California Toey. Those they're the big fat ones that look like Jack Nicholson at the front row of a Lakers game. <laughs> I love them. Smoking a cigarette <laughs> in the ocean. It's great because like they uh they get <laughs> they, they get all their food from the ground. Like they're mm. like, I like fuck all that. I'm for not sure. going up there. Yeah. They're, 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 like the, if it falls, I'll eat it, but I'm not working for it. They're the Bucky's uh, patron of birds. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Will and Dons. <laughs> a of bird birds. that literally walks. Yeah. A bird that's like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with all the fly and stuff. Dude, can I say, dude, dude, just really quickly, this is how mentally ill be, being around my parents makes me, is we went to the Dallas uh, uh, Aquarium, which was really cool, but they had bird stuff, and then I saw a pelican that had been rescued that had no wings, and I started, like, I had to leave the room because I started bawling. Over a I pelican? So, I was like, he can't fly. Oh, no. I was like, that's the one thing he's supposed to do. And then I'm looking at him like Ferris Bueller when he's looking at that painting. Yeah. It's just zooming in. Yeah. To me, big birds don't carry the light. Hmm? Big birds don't carry the light to me. To me, they like they don't have souls. They don't have any fire within them. Mm. To me, they're just like big, dumb animals. You're a little bird guy. Our little birds like carry the. You look at a little bird, you go, "That little guy's carrying the fire." Mm -hmm. That little guy, he has the stellar spark of the soul. I get, I get what you mean, except when they get too little, I feel like I can just step on them and feel. Yeah, like they're not really that real to me. Yeah, when a bird when a bird gets that big, I'm like, I'll squash you like a <laughs> like a roly poly. I don't give a shit. Because at that point, they're like bubble wrap. Yeah, like, exactly. Pop. <laughs> you pick it up like a grape. You just, <laughs> <laughs> just watch its ass come out its mouth. Why is why is nothing little smart? By the way, hmm. everything that's smart is big. Because if it's like smart, it, be, it wouldn't be small. Yeah, <laughs> fucking dumbasses. It's, it's kind of true, actually. <laughs> why that's you have, you as Dawkins. Yeah, that's, why didn't you evolve to be big, idiot? God, they're so fucking dumb. They never like their genetics was never like get yeah. bigger. They never realized they could get big. Yeah, just a, a bird that's dumb as shit. And yeah. it's this big. Yeah, that's why an elephant is so wise. It's like, what if I just get fucking massive? And get killed by Dennis from South Carolina, <laughs> <laughs> who paid forty grand to the poorest. Yeah, I want to get killed by Anthony Cumia. Yeah, I want to get killed by Anthony Cumia after he pays the poorest black person who ever lived five grand to murder me. <laughs> <laughs> so he can take a he can take a, a picture for his shitty Facebook wall. Could you imagine Anthony going on a safari hunt? Oh, I mean, I oh, think Jesus he'd be hunting Christ. something over there. <laughs> he'd be hunting the, the guides. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He'd, he'd be recreating the Zulu Wars. <laughs> Can I shoot the driver uh, of this safari? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember the last time you were at the gas station and saw those horribly branded erection pills? We've all seen those, the rhino pills, your so-and-sos. Well, did you ever take a second to see what's actually in those products? They're terrible for you. That's where uh, you enter joy mode. Uh, Joy Mode is a sexual performance booster that enhances sex drive and blood flow, resulting in better performance. It's a natural and science-backed sexual wellness supplement for men. Take their sexual performance booster before getting down and dirty to support erection quality. No boosters quality. for me. No boosters for for Devin because he's a bit of a he's a bit of a he swings to the right. Yeah. Um, but it's a natural and science-backed sexual wellness supplement for men. Uh, take their booster to support erection quality, firmness, and sex drive. It's created by best in-class scientists and PhD biochemists. The sexual performance booster contains clinically supported doses of arginine nitrate, L-citrulline, panax ginseng, and vitamin C. I use these pills personally. Um, I've used the uh, arginine, and uh, when my girlfriend's not sick, I use it to have uh, sex with her because it makes my penis hard. 
Um, so just tear open a packet and mix it with a six to eight ounces of water. Drink up anywhere from 45 minutes to four hours before sex and watch the magic unfold. So go to usejoymode.com slash lemon and get 20% off with code lemon at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code lemon at usejoymode.com slash lemon. Great sex solved naturally. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, you don't want to spend your whole day figuring out what to eat, going to the grocery store, waiting in long lines, cooking, and doing the dishes. That's why you need to let Factor help. They're ready to eat meal delivery since chef prepared, dietitian approved meals straight to your door. All you have to do is heat them up in the microwave or skillet for two minutes, and you've got yourself an awesome meal. Uh, Factor, we've used their boxes before. They sent us uh, me and Devin boxes. I know Devin made a very nice taco meal. I made a very nice uh, bolognese, a little pasta meal. They're very good. Very good. They and it's great. You don't have to good. think about it. You can make a nice, healthy Super meal quick. at home. Two minutes, dinner, move on with your life. Two minutes, you're done. You don't have to think about it. And you're not eating you know, Burger King, McDonald's. You're not eating these unhealthy meals that make you gross and disgusting and make people hate you naturally. Exactly. Um, so they have vegan, vegetarian, keto, calorie, keto, calorie smart, and protein plus meal options. No matter what your goals are, Factor can help you get there. Head to factormeals.com slash lemon50 and use code lemon50 to get 50% off. That's code lemon50 at factormeals.com slash lemon50 to get 50% off. Thank you, Factor. Now back to the show. Uh, the only other, well, look, I don't want to talk about my family the whole time. It I seems mean, like we kind of had to them. a little bit. I mean... You got to let the steam out. I, I kind of also wanted to talk about the Vince McMahon texts. Those are interesting. Yeah. Did you look at any of them I yet? I haven't them looked at any of them. Today a little bit. Yeah. He's like, because uh, that guy's so awesome. I kind of don't want to uncover if he's oh, a piece it's bad. of shit. It's bad. Is he a pedophile? He's like a billionaire hillbilly, uh, weird sex guy. Like he uh, hillbilly. He's like, yeah. I, I mean, mean, it's wrestling, you know. Yeah, like yeah, he's yeah. like a billionaire, but I don't think he's like. A distinguished billionaire, like, like he's a billionaire, but like when he was making his most money, he was like pitching storylines. He was like, "What if I fuck my daughter on national TV?" Right. That was literally a storyline he pitched one so time. So just I don't know. It sounded like your usual run of the mill, like sex trafficking and locking somebody in in, in yeah, rooms exactly. and shitting on their head. And, yeah, you know your usual stuff. You, you think Russ Perot wasn't doing that, sending those same messages by Telegram in 1970? Apparently, he shit on a woman's head during a threesome. Then he went to take a shower, and the shit was still on her. While she was getting fucked by another guy, and it That's was great. and it was and it was rolling down her, sliding down her back while getting railed. And then he goes takes a shower because I guess he's one of those guys that just doesn't wipe. He just goes he showers right after he shits. And then and then he comes back after the shower and then starts fucking her again while the shit is rolling down her back. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think when he walked out of the shower he did that walk? He did the walk. <laughs> oh yeah, he's doing the face. Oh. <laughs> And then a lot of the text messages, he keeps referring to coming as squirting, which is hilarious. Like for a man. <laughs> I did see that. Yeah. I can't wait for you. So he's like saying like me and all the boys want to squirt in your mouth. He was like making <laughs> me her, and like, all the boys. I, apparently he would he would had names for his sex toys. Like every sex toy he would name after a wrestler. So he'd be like, I'm going to fuck you with Brock Lesnar tonight. <laughs> and shove. Oh, yeah. Him. I have like a text screenshot here where he says. You need your panties ripped off and three big black dicks and all three holes at the same time. Well, exclamation, point, exclamation point, exclamation it's, point, exclamation It's very point. funny if you imagine him saying that in the Vince voice, by the way. And then he says, weigh up your pussy and weigh up your ass as far as they will go, but even farther. Yeah. yeah. And she's going to stick it up your ass far. Uh, she, was, she was genuinely in pain and hurt. She was raped. Yeah. A she's, lot. And he goes, and the thickest cock goes down your throat, so it makes you gag and convulse as those big black cocks pound away. It feels like from the start you're being assaulted, but it's made you come nonstop. Just one continuous constant <laughs> orgasm. And just before you pass out, those big black dicks squirt their loads of cum inside you. As you lay on your stomach, the cum is coming out of all your holes. I'll turn you over and jack off all over you. Honestly, he's a pretty good, like, erotic writer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, bad. it's kind of hot. Yeah, I'm kind of hard right now, honestly. <laughs> but what's so bad about that? If we were in the pool, I'd be jacking off under the under the bubbles <laughs> right now. <laughs> I don't know what's so bad about that, though. But then did it happen and she, like, got raped by these guys? She was getting, she was get, she was getting passed around. Mm -hmm. He was, like, having her... He, he would make her go fuck other people. Yeah, like so, he, he made Booker T call her the N-word. She got really upset. Yeah. <laughs> so what was she getting out of the whole deal? I have no idea. I think she was an employee or something. Yeah. I don't know. He I just, just fucked her and hit her with a really big quickly. chair in the head <laughs> when he came. <laughs> uh, so 
Uh, here's the predicament right now. My dad just texted me. He said, Katie said the cleaning lady was locked out of the laundry room. Hmm. Yeah, that's so what I tried to... The cleaning inside the house right now, hearing everything we're saying, by the way. Mm-hmm. She can't speak a word of English. It's fine. <laughs> we didn't say anything in Spanish. It's fine. I was hoping so badly that we'd be recording this awful podcast, and then she'd like be walking through cleaning in the background. <laughs> yeah. What do you think she thinks is going on out here right now? Mm-hmm. Looking out the window as she's cleaning my home. I think she... She goes, oh, it's the white yoga. Yeah. <laughs> I think she can't. F- it's like when we see like an Aztec ritual where they're all dressed like birds and dancing. Like that's what's happening in her mind. Yeah. But for white people, this is like yeah, yeah this it's a is, rain dance. Yeah, it's a white rain dance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're praying to a song. We're in our natural habitat. Yeah. The three whites they take the microphones and they the, say offensive things. They go up in the temple and they make content for the god. <laughs> I guess you guys got to hold it down real quick while I break down the laundry room door so she can keep like, it's, cleaning my sheets. I think it's sheet. just stuck because of like there's like a thing behind it that got stuck in the door. She's I'll gotta, figure it out. Open it yeah, up. I, I couldn't get in there. She's very small. She mm-hmm. has no leverage. Okay. You should fire her. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> this, I, By the way, I'm thinking about getting rid of that copy of Mind Comp because I came in this it's morning. bad vibes. I came into my office in the morning. And uh, uh, she keeps was distracting she was, you from writing. <laughs> <laughs> you keep yeah. being like, okay, just one chapter. One more. <laughs> just one more. She goes, I love it, this book. <laughs> I saw her. She was dusting my desk. She was dusting my copy of Mind Comp. I'm like, this can't be my life. Yeah. yeah. This woman from El Salvador dusting off my yeah. Yeah, to be Nazi fair, copy yeah. of to Mind Comp. To be fair, Comp. you're probably one of her least Nazi clients. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she Juanita, pro- yeah. did you clean my Nazi China? <laughs> Now, now, you now, sa- did you steal my big helmet with a spike on top of it? <laughs> now that Nazi dagger is not dishwasher safe yeah. and just, cleaned only. I'm imagining you laying next to Katie at night and you've got the blankets over your head with a flashlight and you're reading Mein Kampf secretly. <laughs> yeah, I'm smoking like Hitler's pipe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're dressed like a big Kaiser. You have a big fake mustache on. Uh, can you, we're, we got 10 minutes left. Can you guys hold down the fort real quick while I break down the door for her? She can't wait 10 minutes. I guess maybe we'll just go another 10. Well, Katie's texting me now. Oh. Yeah, Doris keeps calling them. She says she's locked out of the laundry room. All right. I mean, Jesus, go help. Them. All right, go help. Go help. Well, I could them. just do what I always do and pretend I didn't receive the tax. Yeah, put it down. And now you, do, you are saying it into a mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have evidence of this. There is evidence. Yeah. Plus, this episode's going to drop while our parents are still here, so this could be very fortuitous. I mean, fuck her. I'm at work right now. You are at work. This is bullshit. Yeah. yeah. You need to take my job You're responsibly. <laughs> Dude, did I tell you, by the way? Ben, go, you can go get the door. I'll, I'll, go kick it. I'll, t- I'll tell some fascinating tales of Texas. Ooh. I'll regale Devin with some Texas Ooh tales. Ooh la la. No, I was I was going to a, a wedding, and this is pretty funny. I was I was at like this beautiful wedding. Mm-hmm. These two like former Columbia students, like the whole world, beautiful couple, and uh, I hadn't had this happen to me. But the, the like they did the wedding, and it was like great. And then the and then the groom came up to me, and he was like, he was like, "Hey, man, I love the podcast. It's just as good as Come Town." And it felt like like getting a secret Nazi handshake <laughs> at a country club. <laughs> It is. It's uncomfortable, isn't yeah. it? It was a very. It felt like a very wicked secret thing. Yeah. that had happened. I accompanied. I went. Connor had some show yesterday, and I stopped by for a second, and I walked into a green room, and I realized I'd walked into hell. A mm. bunch of people that you know, you know, the old people we used to have to see. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, ran into an old guy that used to be kind of a kind of a scummy, pompous dude. And he is not, he's obviously not doing well because he came up to me and said he loves the show. Yeah. And it yeah. helps him get out his evil. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, but, but you're like, you were doing so much better when you weren't <laughs> listening to the show. <laughs> Yeah, it is. The, it is funny the people who like kind of used to like s- semi try to bully us back in the day now being like, oh, the show's great. I'm sorry I, you know, told you you were racist on stage, you know. Yeah. Five years ago. <sighs> I'm cool now. I'm yeah. cool now that I realize, uh, you know, I'm not going to get any show where black people get the shit beat out of them on HBO. (laughs) There was one woman in the green room that literally, these are the people that do comedy. I was making a joke to Connor and she was trying to get involved and it was an obvious joke and we both laughed and then she took it seriously and I was like, no, it's a joke. And she goes, oh, I don't understand jokes. (laughs) (laughs) And then she went on stage. Yeah, she went on stage to do woman comedy of like, I got fucked by this guy who sucked. Mm -hmm. and That's it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gross. And- I'm gross. I suck ass. I'm gonna chop my tits off. Yeah, the 
it's it's weird. It was it's a there's so many people I'm around where they ask what what I do and they're nice and I I'm charming and I'm having a good time with them. But I go, if you did listen to it, you would think I'm evil. I know. It's I'm a- completely di- like I'm not. I have decorum, like in life. Like I'm not mm-hmm. like a psychopath with st- people. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. sociable and half of whatever. But if they listen to this, then they're like, oh my god, he like is a dude, that- two faced psychopath. Dude, like, I know, dude. Uh, that happened. I was meeting some of Kelly's friends who live in Austin, and they're like this gay couple. They were very nice, and we we're yeah. I'm, I'm like the same. I'm like I'm not meeting a gay couple and being like, what's up, Faye? How you doing, <laughs> right, bitch? We're, we're not like Cartman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not. I'm not walking around eating chicken skins and saying slurs um but the the guys we were hanging like we were like two hours into hanging out and this guy he's a professor he just turned to me and he goes he goes i have a hypothetical question for you guys um let's say you're reading a text in a class and it has a gay slur in it would you say the slur out loud if you're reading it, and in the back of my head, I was like, I say slurs not, quoting myself, I, I say slurs. Yeah, exactly. I was around, it was that type of, like, I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I really, I live in such an insulated, like, sociopathic bubble. Like, we don't realize, like, how, I did a, I, I mimicked a, I was doing an impression of how a woman sounded that was Vietnamese that works at this, like, place that is a famous place. Mm-hmm. And, like, people looked at me like I was Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> and I just forgot, like, oh yeah, I get, I forgot, I you can't do that around. No, no, people. yeah, and sometimes it'll come out. I, I was with some, uh, like, like a bunch of these woke people, and they were, they're watching that like Andrew Callahan January Six documentary, mm-hmm. and I was around them, and I was, you know, I was being fake because I need people to like me wherever I go, or I'll kill myself. <laughs> And so I was like, I, you know, I, the whole day I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, abortion rights, oh, the vaccine's cool, you know, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I say whatever people want. Whatever they want. I'm yeah. like, I'm just trying to get through the day. I'm not, if you if you get in an argument at a dinner and it's not somebody like your parents who you have a deep, you know, feud going against You want to gut punch them a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, it finally, it pops out every once in a while. Finally, they were just talking, they were like, January 6th, it was so disgusting. And then I... I out of nowhere, almost like a, like a drunk dad waking up. I go, January 6th was the funniest thing that ever happened. <laughs> and it was, just, it was just dead silent in this apartment. Oh, man. Yeah, there's, you, you really, you, 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 it's like uh, you got to live underground with your thoughts. Yeah. Well, it's, it's also like the weird thing about like doing this show is like, because sometimes then people, like, in the other way, like, people come to you, like, a fan will see you in real life. They'll be like, what's up, fag, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm at Costco and, right now. Yeah. And you're like, this is not, this is just me dumping my id, you know? I'm not saying. Yes. I'm not being who I am. No, no. Know? This is, like, that late night talking, you know? Yeah. 2 a.m., you stayed up past everybody else, and you're you're downstairs with a couple cool guys, and you're just... Saying shit you might not believe. Right. You wake up the next day and go, I don't know. You're hanging with some cool guys, and then like 15 minutes into it, the last woman leaving, some guy like tries out like a little, like a soft slur. Yeah. Just to see if everybody's cool with it, and then we, we get to go buck wild for two hours. Then a party hours. happens. Yeah. 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 It's like being like a like a barracks in Vietnam or something. You're just like, yeah, we're gonna smoke weed out of a shotgun barrel. Who cares? I I I, I it's kind of I would equate th- what we do here to uh, screaming into a pillow. <laughs> Like go like you're with a family, or you have to be normal. You go into the other room, scream into a pillow, and then walk out. Like it's, you're 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 fine. Yeah, yeah. You know? just screaming slurs into a mm-hmm. into a bed sheet real quick. Yeah, yeah. It was bizarre being around uh, some people last night in the in the comedy world that don't. I don't know how you can do that. It's it, it, well drinking. <laughs> I didn't expect to see them really, but it was it was fine. But it is. It was like I was having that same feeling of like. Shit, yeah, like I really do a totally separate thing that like yeah. I can't even speak normally around most people. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I no. said retarded and 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 I was like, oh, it was like I said the n-word. Mm-hmm. No, people truly act like you're a freak or something. Yeah. yeah. It feels like being like uh not religious in the 1500s or something. Like you're like blasphemous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, one of those rooms where people were literally talking about how you can't f- go to this uh, one bar because they're uh, Trump supporters, the people that own it. Yeah. The Vietnamese people that own this bar. <laughs> and the, these 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 white people and so forth, like, we're talking about how we can't support this immigrant-owned business because they like Trump. I know. That's... And God forbid you go, you know, immigrants are like Trump. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a lot of secret, like, conservatives in L.A., but I can't say that. You know, you know, some people work for a living and they really hate um, paying all those taxes, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, my... maybe they don't. Not a fan of Biden so much. No, that, uh, that's, like, happening with, like, with my girlfriend's friends, and they were, like, I was, like, wanting to go to Starbucks, and they like, we can't because they support Israel. And oh. I'm, like, 
I'm like, is, are we really doing that? Yeah, I know. It's like that type of thing. We have to be like, okay. The, right. That charade. That charade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Israel's like, oh, Starbucks is losing profit. We'll stop bombing. We'll stop blowing up children's Throw schools. away your phone. Yeah. Child slaves. I mean, what are we doing? Do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that point. So anytime uh, anytime I, I have to go to I go to Target and my girlfriend's sick, the last five days I've just been getting Starbucks oh, nonstop. Yeah. I love Starbucks. I love when people boycott a place because of some bullshit like political thing because there's not as many lines and I just go a lot. Mm -hmm. I always go like when they're hated. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a guy who buys. Uh, I saw he buy. He's he started a stock thing where he buys stocks after Republicans start protesting. Like he bought Bud Light during the Kid Rock dip, and then he sells it like three weeks later when everybody forgets, <laughs> and makes like a really good profit off of it. He's just been doing that. Yeah, somebody yeah. was talking yesterday about. Um, this was the, some of the conversation they were talking about. How Dylan Mulvaney's getting into stand up. Mm. Yeah. But it wasn't, they weren't like, isn't that ridiculous? It was almost like, can't wait to book her. <laughs> <laughs> Just overheard. That, I can't believe that. That type of talking, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I just, I felt like. Did you help your maid? Dude, I don't you know. Just go, you just you the... fucked her. <laughs> <laughs> you needed a quickie in the right. middle of We the did show. a stuck porn You're thing. You're like Schwarzenegger. <laughs> she got stuck in the corner like a Roomba. <laughs> And you had, to, you had to turn her real quick. <laughs> I feel like Mike Ehrmantraut. Like, I did the... First of all, I don't know what I'm doing. For Okay, for for reference, I, what, here's what happened. Devin came over. We recorded early. Uh, early. Devin took a huge shit in the yeah. where my laundry room bathroom is. Massive yeah. shit. Came out. Uh, you had turned the lock or didn't turn it completely? No, it, I didn't turn oh. the lock. There was a big, stupid thing for your daughter backpacky thing yeah, I know, that got but, stuck in the door thing. I know, but the knob literally won't turn. So either you shit... You either shit and it already was locked because my dad's a retard and already had it turned up. Either way, her, all her, her purse, her phone, and all the work she needs to do is inside that laundry room. She can't get in. I I, I did like the Mike Ehrman trout thing where I like I had the paper clip and mm -hmm. I put it through the hole. That wasn't working. And then I got the drill and I took off the knob completely and that's not working. Uh -huh. And my hands are covered in black grease now. And I told her I don't fucking know and I can't make came back out oh but oh you didn't so get it open so you didn't help no no she's just sitting in there <laughs> so her, all her stuff is locked in the bathroom that i took a huge shit yeah in. none of the work that she can do today is and it's just the door's locked and i can't get the thing off i didn't lock the fucking uh, who, who, there's some, a thing stuck listen nobody nobody's blaming anybody Devin, we're gonna have the, to kick the down thing, the door the thing can be stuck but explain why the knob doesn't turn I don't know. I didn't lock. You think I was so embarrassed by the shit, I locked it and then closed the door behind me? <laughs> you don't want anybody to I go ever, in? I don't want anyone to ever go in. Like you, you, you weld the, the doorknob well, shut. Well, I might have made a mistake, it sounds like. Well, or you just took a shit and it already was turned up. Like, because someone didn't. It could have already no, been the, Yeah, the door you... wasn't. I technically took a shit with the door ajar. Yeah, it, it, so it was it, probably it, already turned up and it, then you pulled it closed out of deep, deep shame. Yeah, I pulled it closed because that's what you do when you take a massive shit yeah. in somebody's mm -hmm. place. But it, but we, of course, th this is I don't know what you guys are up to with these doors. Why are you guys? Why are the locks up? But this, not this is what the fans complained about because this is the baby's fault. Mm -hmm. Jace got bronchitis and his girlfriend got bronchitis. I did, I did I did not get bronchitis. My girlfriend currently is dying of bronchitis. I had diarrhea really bad and was throwing up for four hours. Right. So we can't record inside and recording. We're recording like eight hours before this episode has to go out. Yeah. We're mm -hmm. recording like Monday during the day. Yeah. So we try to. Do as much as possible and we're recording outside we're recording early Devin as you guys know takes a huge shit two hours early if mm -hmm. you give my baby bronchitis and it goes to the NICU I'll literally kill you and your girlfriend I literally have not stepped inside I've I not know. done anything I know but that's why we're not recording inside no I, and I'm well aware of that I, I, I get it so I guess the baby is ruining the whole show it is I well, hate this I guess this is the final episode <laughs> of Lemon Party <laughs> let's just have the baby on the show let's give her a mic and see how she responds to you being racist. Well, lemonparty.life for uh, come see us in Austin, Dallas, and uh, Houston. Uh, Austin, February 7th, uh, Houston, February 9th, and February 11th. Come watch the Super Bowl with us uh, in, yeah, Fort Worth. in Fort Worth. That's yeah. going to be fun. We're going to watch the last, uh, I think, couple quarters of the Super Bowl at the place. <laughs> I yeah. think the, the, show last half. <laughs> the show starts in the third quarter the of the Super show starts Bowl. In the, the, we found a really great spot, third quarter of the Super Bowl. 
on Sunday. We're gonna but watch we, it at Twin Peaks. But we're gonna we're, yeah we're gonna play it on a Twin Peaks. <laughs> we and we're gonna we're gonna sexually of, assault the women with their ass cheeks out. Bunch of waitresses from tight ends. Have them come on stage. Oh, with that's us. it. Tight ends. Tight ends. Tight yeah, ends yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what I bet. Yeah, yeah. Twin Peaks is not is pretty close as well. Yeah, same yeah. shit. Twin Peaks is like you see so much ass that you feel sad mm. afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Patreon.com slash living party. I don't know. I guess I got to call Locksmith. I don't know, but we got to record another episode because God forbid mom and dad walk back here and we're in we're in the middle of a riff. Mm. Has Katie giving because you an update? I think, what if, well, th- she's trying to buy me time. Can't you keep right stalling now. them? This is like Ocean's Eleven. She should strand them. I literally leave them somewhere. I literally texted Kay. I was like, if you need to, like, cut a hole in the tire or something. <laughs> oh, I got a lot of texts too. Yeah, that th- she's locked out of the laundry room. Let Fuck. Whatever. I am working. They don't I, understand that the, this is a real job. Yeah. <laughs> They don't understand that this is a real... Not everyone yeah. can do this. I, 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 I scream all the time. I'm walking around my apartment. I go, I have to live stream. The cat is being annoying. They don't understand that we're not civilians. Yeah, dude. We're uh, we're, we're the comedians. Um, we have the comics mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we kind of like we kind of like show you the id. Yeah. Of, you oh, know, no. We don't have jokes. We just have takes. We just have takes. <laughs> we we kind of show you the fucked up thoughts of, of what a dad would think at a golf course in Alabama. <laughs> Anywhere in the country, our show is vibe based. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a vibe, and mm-hmm. we're the last, uh, we're the last bastion, uh, or we're the last line of defense against the the woke mind, the virus. woke mind virus. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep, mm-hmm. I've yep. always believed that. Yep, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the woke mind virus, of course, as we know, is is people just sucking cocks, yeah. and eating pussies. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not uh, nine hundred billion dollars going to the military yeah. every year. <laughs> The last well, line of defense against the woke mind virus is smoking cigars, uh, drinking whiskey, and talking about elk meat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. That's that's what that's what I just them. I just calculated. I did my taxes. I calculated that five thousand dollars of it went to the U.S. military. Oh yeah, I have to but, fucking file my Israel's soon. Yeah, my Israel. <laughs> <laughs> they did. I was going through TurboTax. And they go, "Would you like to donate an extra hundred dollars to Israel?" Are you fucking kidding Check me? Out. No. <laughs> I would believe it at this point. Do you see the billboards like all over uh, different cities where really? it's like, it's like got milk, but like for like Israel? Sure, Bre- it's Bre- it's Brett Galman. Yeah, it's got got fag <laughs> for Israel. Someone uh, someone posted a Holocaust uh, for Holocaust Remembrance Day. You know, mm-hmm. uh, there's a like someone, we get it. Yeah, it's the well. Someone wrote a story like oh, about uh, I talked to this man. And I saw the tattoo on his wrist. You know. And uh, he started talking. He was crying, talking about how he was a boy and he was cleaning the uh, cabins for the Nazis. He was like their maid or whatever. Uh And he said uh, he was talking about like hunger and you don't understand hunger. And he said one of the German shepherds, when the German shepherd uh, fell asleep and so did his Nazi captor or whatever, he said he crawled over very quietly like a dog Mm. and ate from the German shepherd's bowl. Mm. And uh, like that was, and then the German Shepherd woke up and looked at him, and the German Shepherd let him keep keep eating, and he said he realized that a dog has more compassion than a Nazi, mm-hmm. and like that was a story, and I was like, well, this is like literally the most PG thing. Yeah, if this, if this was the this would be the most PG story coming out of Gaza right now, and, and that's that's literally like it's yeah. a hallmark story. They, coming yeah, they're out like of Gaza. I had to eat dog food for a day, and that's why I deserve an apartment on one eight hundred Gaza Street. <laughs> My empathy levels are low right now too. Yeah. So I read it and I, I out loud I went, oh bullshit, dude. I fucking, dude. yeah. I know. I'm so. I go, over. Shut the fuck. I'm up. so over all of it. It was your great grandfather. You don't remember any fucking shit of it. And he's lying. And by the way, he's lying. And it didn't happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> dude, I was watching. Dude, I was watching guys. I was watching guys grocery. That games. is awful though. That it, it's awful. Yeah, I know yeah. it, it was happened. Terrible. It happened and is bad. It's terrible. And they should get to kill babies whenever they want. <laughs> To build apartments. He took the dog's house. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching an episode of Guy's Grocery Games. It was like from five years ago. It's so funny to go from that to Guy's Grocery No, no, no. It's, 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 going, it's going full circle. <laughs> guys in Israel, like baking for him. No, one of the contestants came out. He goes, I'm a commander in the IDF, and that's why I'm 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 uh, I'm, I'm going to play for them today. And then he uh, he just made a grilled cheese sandwich and lost in the first round. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, he made a grilled cheese sandwich that they said was bad. And then he was like, "He's a commander in the in the Israeli army." So. Was he even like faking the whole like like a uh, Middle Eastern thing, or was he like? Because there's a lot of guys that are in the IDF that like just like moved from Chicago. Yeah, he kind of had that thing where he looked like like a hairy subway Jared, so you can't really tell, okay. you know. Yeah, 
a couple of weeks indoors with no tans, like he could be, you know, not. Mm. So, yeah. I mean, fucking, I figured out Golda Meir, the lady who founded Israel, she's from Minneapolis. Yeah. You know that? Yeah, they're like an, they're an expansion team. <laughs> they're like the Houston Texans. <laughs> yeah, it's like Luca going overseas <laughs> yeah, it's and just, just putting up seven. It's a new team. The, the Raiders moved to Vegas. <laughs> That's cool. Well, so, I, anyway. I guess we got to dismount here and do a Patreon. I got to break down that. I think I have to break the door. Yeah. This is interesting. What a bizarre, bizarre day this has already become. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, it, it really is all my my beautiful girlfriend that I love. So yeah. she really and I really got to get out of here before they come back. I mean, I love your mom, but I do not want to be around. Uh, no, I don't be either. around that. He I won't. No, he won't here. talk to you. He'll he'll go and sit in his Archie Bunker chair and, right. and watch Sopranos. Him, uh, really. You can watch the... Sopranos with him if you want yeah. when he comes oh, back. Yeah. I swear to God, you can. You can sit there. <laughs> you'll see him in the top window like uh, Alfred Hitchcock's psycho. <laughs> Just staring at the darkness, <laughs> and then you walk in, and it's actually Ben dressed like. What my if dad. I became like great friends with your dad? <laughs> we developed a great relationship. I'm sure he'd love you. I mean, if you just let it fly around him, yeah, do a lot of f, a lot of f. He loves f. Yeah, if you call someone an f, he loves it. Yeah, yeah, and, and dr- drop a little. He goes just. He goes. It's not f and n word. It's n word. <laughs> <laughs> he loves b side slurs. B-side, B-side slurs? slurs. If you slip in a slur for a certain race that like he probably hasn't heard in twenty years, he's uh, like, ooh, yeah. He's like I forgot about this. Oh one. my ooh. god, he called a Greek a diner monkey. <laughs> ooh, there we go. Now we're cooking. He's like, ooh, I forgot about Big Star. They had that great album. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's let's end we this. Gotta gotta we got to do the other app. Right. Yeah. Town of El Paso, I fell in love with a Mexican girl. Nighttime would find me in Rose's Cantina, music would play and Polina would whirl. Blacker than night were the eyes of Polina, wicked and evil while casting a spell. My love was deep for this Mexican maid I was in love but in vain I could tell One night a wild young cowboy came in Wild as the West Texas wind